now on the website, we have the hated by the HOA with a pickup truck doing a burnout in front of the house. These are live on CletusMcFarland.com. You can also get yourself a no car like a Mopar sticker with a Challenger Hellcat on it. We also got this Dr. Parker racing hat, which, you know, this logo looks a little familiar. One of my favorite beverages, I must add. And finally, my most prized item for sale, the Dr. Parker's toothbrush made out of billet CNC aluminum. And then it comes with two toothbrush heads. You can get signed up on a subscription plan. So you don't even have to think about getting new toothbrush heads. We automatically send them to you. All of these items can be found on cleavesmcfarland.com. So get them all the last, they're in stock right now. As Brian's mega truck that we're taking to the barn this weekend, he's having an issue with his serpentine belt shredding. So they're trying to identify which pulley is the problem. He's gonna get a laser tool on it tomorrow, but he's trying to just hit it with a straight edge now to see if he can identify which pulley's the issue. The alternator is definitely off. I think that at this point is the only thing that's really far off. Do the old straight bar trick. How's she looking, brother? You're, you're a tooth off. Yeah, but <laughs> this yeah, lip yeah, is right? fatter than the other. Did you try looking at it through your good eye, Jamie? I mean, oh, which one's good? I never went to the eye doctor. <laughs> I mean, it definitely could go back through, but like when you go on the inside, it's kind of hard to hold it. What do you think the problem is here? I think it needs more horsepower. Yeah, for sure. Things kind of weak. Just take the belts off. It doesn't need belts. No, it just needs to go straight. Yeah, you don't He's need gonna to drag you backwards anyway. You don't need a serpentine belt. Mm -hmm. No, that's overrated. Just need a supercharger belt. Mm -hmm. That's it. The alternator is like a whole, a whole fucking tooth off. <laughs> God, Lee. Well, everything's gonna be in this trunk. This piece of shit. Everything's <laughs> so solid when I hit my head on it. Brian's truck is for sale for ten grand. If anyone wants it, I'll put his cell phone number in the description. Tonight. If that's the case, I'm running. I, I got it at my mother-in-law's house. I'm sure mom will let me loan it real quick. <laughs> well, it's got to be on hand right now. No, I'm sure Eileen has that on hand. Not a problem. Give me I, five minutes. I've five. got 3,600 cash right now. No. All right. Literally, one mile up the road, my mother-in-law has it. I can go grab it right now. <laughs> Mom loves me. <laughs> what do you want me, boss? You want to call him? All right, guys. I'm at my buddy Brian's house right now. We got a little surprise, all right? I've got a box here that came from Thailand. If you haven't seen the Longtail Riverboat video yet, I bought a long tail Thailand diesel riverboat that's twin turboed. This is the first box that has showed up since Thailand. The boat is getting ready to be in a shipping container and come overseas. And I honestly have no idea what's in this box. So we're gonna cut this open. I got a friend here. Jump on in, man. This is my buddy Brian's dad. What do you think's in there? What do you think's in here? I don't know, son. I You're don't know what I wish was in there, but. <laughs> oh, ooh, we got some charge pipes, it looks like. Look at that, all the way from Thailand. Look at those welds. You guys know how to throw some dimes, don't they? Aluminium charge pipe. So the, uh, the, what's on the boat is a twin turbo system. It's a compounding turbo. They sent over some of the parts that we are allowed to ship over. Now, obviously, like, the engine block can't come, but we took... We do have some parts that are coming over so that we can somewhat get it back together. Okay, we got some heavy dogs here. Let's see what this is. Manifold? Looks like an uh, intake manifold. Yeah. Exhaust manifold. Yeah, okay. I was hoping we would get like a turbo or something in the mail. That would've been sweet. Valve is cover. It? Is it? No, it's not the valve cover. Yeah. No, it's like the oil pan. It's nasty how dirty this diesel stuff gets. All right, guys, that's the first box that I've gotten from Thailand. We're getting some parts sent over, you know, Little add-ons here with the green billet. Little AN adapter for, it looks like, uh, probably the turbo return, I would guess. But, uh, start to show up piece by piece. Hopefully we can get it all pieced together before summer because there's some sick events here in the summer as far as racing goes at the John Boat World. And I'd love to have this thing going for that. Gosh dang, girl. Quite the large suitcase for three days of being gone. Well, extra room. And yeah, then I don't yeah. want to carry it on by myself. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's get this thing loaded up. Bye, Caroline is leaving for the weekend. We're going to get our suitcase loaded up, get her out of here. And then I got to drive to Tampa for a marketing meeting, which is kind of cool. I'm going to show you guys what they've been doing. They've been able to 
build up my practices uh, online marketing presence with some really cool ads. So I'm gonna show you what they do for me. Yo, we're starting off this day at Drive Social Media in Tampa. They came to my office about six months ago and got me signed up for doing their Facebook ads. I'm gonna kind of show you guys what that entails. They've done a really good job. I've got a great ROI going. We've got a meeting today to kind of reevaluate some ads and how they're going on Facebook. So come tag along on this little journey. I'm gonna be showing you guys some real numbers here, uh, full transparency, just so you can understand the value in investing in marketing. So lay it on me, brother. What do we got here? All righty. So what we're looking at is data from running the ads and actually looking at seeing if people who are becoming new patients are seeing ads before they're becoming new patients. Right. So one of the things that we're looking at is our cost per thousand impressions. Yeah. So this is every, how much it's costing us to get the ad seen a thousand times. And these um, ads have been seen 560,000 times since we started it in late October until beginning of January, is that right? Yep. And yep. those have only turned into four new patients. But when you see the amount spent on ads versus the ROI, it's, it's pretty cool. All right, so we've had... Uh, what was our total ad spend? So total ad spend, you spent seventeen hundred, yeah. and then ten thousand was the overall investment with this ad again. Oh, so this was my initial. Yeah, so that's your with ad spend and retainer. So we got four new patients for a total revenue for the two. Uh, really, what is it? Month, two yeah, months, two, and a, two, and a two half months and a week. You know, four patients. You know. Initial investment was probably like six or seven, probably like eight grand to get started probably, with you guys. Yeah. As we progress and do ads for longer, the, the total marketing investment will kind of shrink in a sense because it'll be distributed out over across more months. But the ad spend of $1,700 bringing in a revenue of over $20,000, the ROI is pretty strong here. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys are all, I'm also paying you guys to add comments to my YouTube videos too, right? I don't think we so. Can. Bots, <laughs> the bots. Yeah, yeah. So all the bot you comments you see office? and the fake views and likes, that's these guys as well. Yeah, They're... that's not Parker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not that. Um, Keep in mind, I just started with these guys in late October. So we're doing like what's called the first sprint. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of just gathering data before we make a move. And today's kind of our second sprint so that we can readjust our ads, who we're targeting, how much we're spending, and actually change the pictures and how the ads are laid out. All right, check it out. This is our new homepage. They came by and took photos. It looks so good. Nice work, guys. I'm so excited about this. This is like the coolest looking uh, Facebook page for a dental office I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's see what let's see what's next. Cool. We got oh, that's way better. Day. I love that picture. All right, so we got 2A here. This is actually the target audience. They're going to target 9,800 people. AI is going to target 138,000 based on those first 9,800. Mm -hmm. And the radius about 18 miles from the office. Oh, that's so cute. So cute. Yeah. I love that. That's so cute, guys. Browse our five star reviews. Same target audience. And uh, dang, that looks sick. All right, we are leaving the social media meeting, and I'm headed over to the cleater shop to get some parts. Hopefully, we can get a fresh tune slapped on the Hellcat today. Either got to take it to Fort Myers or they're going to come up to me. I really don't know how it's going to play out, but got a trailer. Going to get it loaded up tonight, and then we are heading out midday tomorrow to some truck pulls at the barn in the Daytona area. So it's gonna be a really fun weekend, I'm pumped. We're gonna go rip the Hellcat up and down the street, kind of break her in a little bit. She's already warmed up to temp. Uh, I definitely need to top off like the intercooler when I get back and gonna keep an eye on those temps. But let's go rip this thing. Smaller blower with smaller pulley. We'll see how much boost it makes. Cooler temps are sitting at 102. We got water temps are at 170. Fuel pressure is good. Oil pressure is good. I'm gonna pull the data log and see if there was like, see what if it was too lean or too rich. Kind of see what the deal is there. But the map sensor should be picking it up since we're already going to like a lower blower. I did see we were making 18 pounds of boost on that pole. So 
Uh, I don't know if I was pouncing the rev limiter or if it was breaking up, so we're gonna dive into that right now. Let me pull the log and I'll show you guys what I see. Here's what we're looking at here. Here's a pole, you can see the green line here is my throttle position sensor. Here's the shift. And what looks like going on is I was hitting the rev limiter. The rev limiter set really low at like 5,700. So I was riding that rev limiter and then it, you know, just kind of crapped out on boost. We were making peak boost of close to 18 PSI, which is pretty healthy for the, pretty stout for this thing. Um, only thing concern that I do have is it looks like we have a drop in fuel pressure here from about 88 pounds, right? Where is it at? 88 pounds right here. And then it dropping to 77 pounds. We have about a 10% loss in fuel pressure. All right, we're doing rip number two in the Hellcat. Get a little more data. Gonna rev it out a little bit higher into the 6,000s. Watch that air to fuel. Hopefully it doesn't break out this time. I think I was just bouncing the rev limiter on that last pull and that's kind of what spooked me, but we'll see how she does this time around. assess the situation i was definitely getting water like splashing up through here i don't know if it was the breather or the expansion tank this feels very very hot but where would the water be coming out of is my question well hopefully it's just a breather because i've always had the hood on it so i guess i wouldn't really have known if it was coolant or water this looks like water on the windshield though like when i smear it i guess it is a little bit oily but Oh yeah, it must have been coming out of that blow by there. Let's feel this coolant hose. No, uh, it's pretty, not very tight. So I don't know what was going on. I don't know if we were building pressure inside the expansion tank or what, but I'm not gonna take that off while it's hot. Right now we're downloading the data log. It looks like the serpentine belt is still on. I was losing a bit, a little bit of power steering, so I'm gonna check my power steering fluid. It looks like it is pretty much below the minimum line. So I definitely need to get some power steering fluid because that helps. But I guess I'm now wondering why I'm building more than, what is it? 21 PSI in the coolant expansion tank. That's not a good sign. That could be a sign of a bad head gasket. But the car was staying cool and performing well. I mean, those poles were nasty. Like it stayed in it, it didn't break up at all once I raised that rev limiter. So I'm downloading the data log right now and then we can kind of go over it together and see how she performed. All right, here's what we're looking at. Here is the, let's go to the first pole over here. Throttle into first, shift second, and we are making, at peak, we're making, looks like 14, 18 pounds in first gear. Second gear, that's weird. It only shows 70% throttle. That's probably second gear here. And it looks like we're getting some belt slip. We're at 10 and a half pounds of boost. So definitely some belt slip going on there, but my air to fuel looks healthy. My fuel pressure is dropping from, or staying steady. It looks like now at 77, or that's my oil pressure. Uh, fuel pressure is at about 76. And then this last pull looks like we started off at about 17 and went down to 16 pounds of boost, oh, 15. So definitely getting some belt slip there, but you know, that's kind of expected when you're making 18 pounds of boost. Let's go to the second pull here. Second pull when I was in it wide open, 100% throttle. Boost, we were making 18 all the way through. And then at about, oh yeah, when I let off, it started dropping again. Okay, so then when I shifted, we got up to 18 pounds of, 17.3 pounds of boost. But as I rode that gear out and it got up to RPM, we were only at making about a little, 10 pounds of boost. And it should be staying still at about 18. But that's all right. Once, uh, We'll kind of see how this thing does when it starts doing burnouts and stuff. If we're getting major belt issues, then we might have to get a tighter belt because this, I was kind of guessing it might be too lax on this one. Um, 
but everything else looks pretty decent here. Fuel pressure, oil pressure steady. I think that we are ready for a send this weekend. Sick. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.